So you've all probably seen around the place those posts about implantable technology, biohacking, NFC implants, RFID implants, things like that, and then the mass hysteria that sort of follows that. Um, and I'm here to sort of dispel some of those myths. So NFC is the method that I'm most familiar with. So what is NFC? So NFC is near field communication. Uh, it's basically a passive chip. So the chip itself has no power in it. Um, it involves an initiator, which is a device that can supply power through radio frequency signals. It needs to be within four and a half centimeters, I believe, by standard um, to receive uh, communication. Um, so it needs to be that close to do anything. What does NFC do, or RFID as well? Uh, they can be used to like open doors. Um, they can be links to websites. They can be um, they can trigger sort of functions of apps on your phone, um, and then through the phone app you can make it do all sorts of crazy things. But basically. Um, there's there's tons of functionality around it. You know, it's all up to your imagination. My personal NFC implants, I have one that pre-fills a tweet to Twitter to say that I'm about to go live streaming on Twitch. Um, the other one has my Twitter, Facebook, phone number, email address, all that sort of stuff. So someone can just tap my implant and they have my contact details to saved to their phone, which is uh, pretty cool. So the most common myth that we have, like that I have to deal with, you guys don't ever have to, um, but the most common thing that I see around is the government can track you. Like that that's the big thing because there was that whole um, conspiracy theory about the government putting chips in people so they can track them and blah, 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 those sorts of things. Now there's a lot that goes into why that's not practical. Um, so by this point, I should have shown off, um, my implants being scanned with a phone. Now, um, it took about 10, 15 tries with each implant to get that to occur on that single sort of tap. Um, it's not easy when there's tissue over the implant, like it's not a perfect read like it is with a tag and, you know, similar things like that. Um, the, the implant isn't as easily scanned. So that's your first problem. So if someone was to track you, they would have to be so close that their initiator, which is possibly a phone or something like that, would pretty much, well, it'd have to be touching your skin. Because like to even get mine to scan, I actually have to press my phone to my arm. Um, it's not something that's just a light hover will get it eventually. And I have to actually be, you know, there's a fair bit of force. So if someone's trying to track you, they're touching you. So you should probably notice that. The other part is because there's no power in your chip, it can't be a GPS. It can't send tracking information. So the initiator, which would be what is touching you directly, would have to have a GPS and that would be sending signal out. So basically... For the government to track you, you'd have to have Agent Smith walking around pretty much holding your hand with, you know, a device up to your arm the entire time for them to get you. Now, I don't know who these people think they are, but I can guarantee there is no government agency that gives that much of a shit about anyone that they would send out an agent to carry a device around just to scan an NFC or RFID chip to find out where they are. Congrats. Fucking Catherine just went to the mall. So the next thing that people tend to bring up is metal poisoning or metal allergies or something like that because obviously at face value, the concept of having a chip under your skin is a really bad one. Um, now, your biggest concern here would be obviously metal to skin contact. However, every company that does this has a method of enclosing the chip, 
most common one being glass. Um, so your chips in a glass enclosure, which again adds to this whole um, four and a half centimeter distance. There's another sort of barrier that may add a variable as to where it can be scanned. In that glass enclosure is your chip. So at no point is metal making contact with you um, for extended periods of time under the skin. Um, now, the, the next part of that is what if the glass breaks? Well, I think at, if you've managed to break something the size of a Tic Tac, then you've probably got bigger concerns. You've probably, you know, fallen off a motorbike, you've had a car accident, something like that. At that point, you're probably going to be getting it removed anyway, and you've got far, far bigger concerns. And last, but very, very much not least, um, there's the age old infection. Now, the reality is these implants should always be done by someone that's experienced. Um, I've had both of mine done by body piercers, one myself when I was a body piercer, um, and one was my ex-partner who was a body piercer at the time. The process is exactly the same as um, any body piercing. So, you know, all your tools have been sterilized first or they're sterilized and disposable. Um, like everything goes through a very clean process. So your real chances of infection, it's a matter of how you as a client look after your uh, new modification. So you're still dealing with an open wound. There is a chance of it becoming a bacteria trap if you don't look after it. Um, there's no crazy um, healing regime or anything like that. They do heal quite quickly and quite easily, but realistically, your infection chances are no different than with a piercing. Just be smart and look after it and follow your um, body modification artist's um, recommendations for healing. And that's pretty much it. So that rounds out my video. Um, I wanted to keep this one short, but I really wanted to talk about this topic uh, because it is one that I see a lot and I have to fight with people on Facebook and Twitter about it. So I figured I'd just vent with you guys. All right. So thanks for coming by. Hopefully I'll be doing more while I'm on hiatus uh, from Twitch. I want to do some more content. So I'll go through some of my ideas and um, hopefully put some more together.